Hi, this is my implementation of model predictive control for a differential drive robot. So first of all, we start by modeling the robot here. So the robot states are X, Y, and theta stored in the states variable. The control inputs are the linear velocity V and the angular velocity omega stored in the controls uh, variable. So these states and controls are mapped by a nonlinear mapping function here, F, which maps the states and controls as uh, the derivatives of the state x dot, y dot, and theta dot are equals to v cos theta, v sin theta, and omega mentioned uh, stored in the arches variable. So the model predictive control uses a prediction horizon of any n, uh, which we have set as 3, and a sampling time, which we have set as 0.2. Now, we have for modeled the problem using the Kasadi library. So this provides a very <clears throat> structured uh, method to model the problem using these data structures. And so the U variable is storing the decision variables and the P is storing the parameters, which is the initial state and the reference state. So this demo is for the differential drive robot to start from an initial position and reach to a reference position and then stop there. So as we can see here, uh, we are using Euler discretization to calculate the next state. So the next state is equals to previous state plus sampling time into the F value. The F value here is the RHS, the V cos theta, V sin theta, and the omega, which we are calculating after solving the optimization problem. So now we'll convert the optimal control problem to a non-linear programming optimization problem. So we have the objective function, the G variable, which stores the constraints, the running and or the stage cost are calculated in this manner. As you can see, the, the Q and the R matrices are weighting matrices which decide the cost for the states and the control input respectively and the value of these weighting matrices de uh, decides what has to be prioritized uh, so we define the running stage as the the running uh, cost as the current state minus the reference state the state which we have to reach into the q matrix into the transpose of the uh, the same, the current state minus the reference state plus the control input into R weighting matrix into the uh, transpose of the control inputs. So this is a scalar value and we calculate this value from uh, 1 to N, which is our prediction horizon. So we solve this optimization problem. We get the set of control inputs. We apply the first control input and then get the predicted state. And then we solve the optimization problem again when we reach the next state. This is how model predictive control works. This strategy is called moving horizon or receding horizon strategy. Uh, as you can see, the G variable constraints uh, uh, contains the constraints. Uh, here we define the optimization variables, which is only the control input in this case, since this is the single shooting method. Uh, and then the NLP problem is structured this way using the objective function, the optimization variables, the constraints and the parameters. The, for solving the nonlinear programming optimization problem, we are using IPOPT method, which is the iterative point method. And we set the parameters over here. Now, this was just the structuring of the problem. We also define the constraints over here, the lower bound and the upper bounds for the states, which is minus two and two. So the robot can only move within an area and not cross that area. And accordingly, these lower bounds and upper bounds are set. 
Also, we have uh, lower bounds and upper bounds for the linear velocity and the angular velocity. So we, uh, according to whatever input we can apply. So we define that here. Now the actual simulation setup. So here we define the initial state as zero, zero, since we are starting from the origin and the final state we have to reach. Here is the first control input, which is defined as zeros, the simulation time. So this will be used to calculate how much time the optimization problem has to be solved in order to reach closest to the reference point. Here we define the loop in which the conditions are set. So when the steady state error, so when the error between the current state and the reference state is less than some value one E minus two, and the iterations is less than uh, the simulation time divided by the sampling time. So till then this optimization problem will run. And as you can see, the MPC iteration variable stores the iteration number. And this also gives us the uh, average MPC time here. So uh, we solved this optimization problem uh, and then we simulate it. So let me show you the simulation. Here, this is the robot and the, the prediction horizon is very low. It is currently set to three and thus the robot does not track the reference position that well and there is some error. But since the conditions for our loop are satisfied, the system converges and we get this performance. Now we will see the plots which show the plots for the states and the control inputs. So this is the, these are the plots. So as, as the system started, the system wanted to move the, towards the reference position as quickly as possible. So it provided the largest linear velocity that, that was possible, which was 0.6 since we have set the constraints and then gradually it reduced to zero as we have to stop to the reference position. Similarly for the angular velocity, the same thing happened and then it moved to zero. Now the parameters, which are the sampling time and prediction horizon decide how our performance would be. So now if I set the, uh, uh, prediction horizon as 20 and so, uh, simulated, you can see these outputs have improved and the performance is much better. We can see, we can get a very good, uh, tracking of the reference position and the system reaches it smoothly. So these are the, uh, lean velocity and the angular velocity inputs that we have applied. Now, similarly, there's the multiple shooting approach. Let me show you the multiple shooting approach. So in multiple shooting here, the only change we make is in the optimization variables, we can, we include the states as well. So this part is the states and this part is the control inputs. So now we are optimizing the states too. And then we add a equality constraint here, which relates to the current state minus the reference state. So now the system knows where we want to reach and thus, uh, in the previous case, the system may or may not converge since we don't know where we are going. But in this case, since we are also optimizing the states, we know where we are going and the performance is better. Uh, also one additional point I would like to mention is that uh, to calculate the next state, we can also use another method like Ranch Kuta method, which is different from the Euler discretization as it calculates the next value as previous state plus this, uh, parameter, which is calculated in this manner. And, uh, thus it uh, provides the next state. Now we'll simulate it. 
as you can see, the performance is better and we reach the reference position smoothly. Now, the similar problem can be, uh, the similar system can be uh, used to track a trajectory. And so our, now our problem is not position tracking. Our problem is trajectory tracking. So let me show you the demo first. As you can see, this is the reference trajectory. The green line shows the reference trajectory. The robot is moving from the initial state and this is the prediction horizon. As it reaches the reference trajectory, then it stays there. So this is the problem that we are challenging here. As we can uh, uh, see, the, the tracking is very accurate. So the only change that we make here is in the running or stage cost. So now the running and or the stage cost is calculated differently. So we are calc uh, we have the reference trajectory in this problem, the x ref, the y ref, and the theta ref. So it is governed by a function. 0.5 uh, into t is the x reference value. The y reference value is always one because the y is constant and the theta reference is zero. So using this, we use this in the running or stage cost to uh, we use that to calculate the running or stage cost. And now uh, the optimization problem looks bigger, but it is actually simpler. And in this way, uh, we are able to track the trajectory. So Again, if you vary, uh, vary these parameters, the sampling time and the prediction horizon, our performance will change. And another point I want to mention is that uh, the, the time required to compute the optimization problem should be lower than the sampling time or the system will break. Uh, now I'll provide the analysis that I have uh, experienced using model predictive control over other methods. So model predictive control is an approach which fuses feed forward with feedback. So in feed forward, we are also looking forward as to where we want to go. And in feedback, we are also taking the uh, measured states from our sensors and then uh, calculating in the error. So uh, model predictive control is a proactive con approach to control. Uh, as compared to other uh, control approaches, which is just a reactive approach. Uh, then another thing I wanted to mention is uh, that in MPC, uh, the priority is given to the objective cost, minimizing the objective cost and the constraints uh, and following the constraints. Uh, so as we saw, the constraints are never violated and the system reaches the position or the trajectory. But this is not the case in other control approaches like robust control and adaptive control. The system, in order to reach the reference trajectory, may violate the constraints. So we have no control over the constraints as to what the torque input torque value would be uh, to reach some state. But since we know as well in the real world, we have physical limits, uh, safety constraints and performance constraints on our hardware, we need to incorporate this. So for a approach such as robust control and adaptive control, we have to simulate the system, then get the inputs, if, see if they are violating the constraints, then tune the parameters so that the control inputs are within the bound and then repeat this process until they are within the bound. But for model predictive control, we can provide the constraints in the 
optimization problem and thus this is a very effective approach to uh, solve this constraints problem and uh, thus uh, model predictive control is a, a very effective optimal control uh, approach and this was my demo and my analysis thank you